How's it going, guys? Today we're going to be talking about something that it is essential for the professional cinematography, which is power. I'm talking about V-mount batteries. I'm reviewing the Watson VM99HCSR. This is a 6.86 amp, 98.78 watts an hour. The maximum output is 180 watts, 15 amp battery. And this is rather compact. A lot of V-mount batteries, as you can see, they're rather tall, so they actually made everything compact. I guess in this video, there's going to be two types of viewers, the ones that use V-mount batteries every single day and want to check out this particular model here, and the other ones that are just trying to become familiar with the V-mount batteries and its advantages. But the ability to power everything from the camera to the monitor, even devices that require USB power can be your cell phone or even a task cam little recorder that you have in your rig. So this actually features on this side here a USB 1 amp, it's a little bit slow charge for an iPhone, but in case of an emergency, it's here. And over here you have your D-Tap, which outputs the same exact voltage as you see on the main connectors of the battery here. So this can actually power your devices, thus making the whole setup nice and clean. Now for the other viewers who are just trying to become familiar with the V-mount batteries, you probably use the Sony MPF battery, which these are primarily designed for camcorders. As a matter of fact, a lot of lighting panels, the first thing that you're going to see as far as DC power option will be again the Sony MPF batteries because they are very inexpensive. When you buy batteries like this, especially if it is not a real OEM Sony MPF batteries, you'll never know how good these little batteries are depending what the seller is, how long they've been sitting on the shelf. And and how good the actual cells are and sometimes you get lucky sometimes you don't but when you buy a v-mount battery these are not cheap but at least you will getting the trust 100 percent as soon as you unbox this thing you charge it up and usually you have no disappointments whatsoever so back in the day, 15, 18 years ago, all I used was the regular Sony NPF batteries and yes, the Chinese knockoff ones. And then I got pretty tired of that. And then I was seeing a bunch of guys using the uh, V-mount batteries. And then I was wondering why these people spend so much money when you can buy two of these little batteries and run my light the same way. Well, I'll tell you why. These batteries, they're designed for low voltage draw, such as a camcorder, for example, the Sony HXR and X5R, it draws about no more than 8, 9 watts per hour on these batteries, in which these are primarily designed for camcorders, not for light panels. So you can use these batteries in two ways for lighting. The ones that has the uh, proper slot for fitting the two Sony NPF batteries and the other light panels, which don't come with this, that's a first sign, but you can still buy a V-mount adapter and then put those two batteries in there and try to run the light. I have a GVM RGB 110S. As soon as I try to run at 100%, the light shut off on me, so I have to kind of lower down the intensity to about 65, 80, 85%. And then the battery did okay. And um, at that percentage, they can last almost as long as the V-mount batteries. This one, if I remember correctly, it was almost two hours around time, which I used the Generate Mini Moon. And this guy's last about an hour and 30. But what happened was when I removed this battery, when it ran out of charge, the whole thing was cool to the touch. And these batteries here, they came out extremely hot, especially when these batteries, they are running out of power on the last 10, 15 minutes. It's very warm. And don't attempt to charge these batteries immediately because you're gonna damage the battery even further. You gotta wait until it cools off and then you charge this battery. Another problem that I have running this little Sony MPF battery is because even if you use the actual real Sony battery, but what's going to happen to this battery is that, again, this is designed for slow like a, or a soft power draw, 
when you run a 60 watt panel, such as the Generate Mini Moon, for example, in which that's the light that I chose to uh, make a test on this unit, because 60 watts is a pretty decent amount of power, especially running on the little Sony NPF batteries. So when I ejected this battery out of the Generate Mini Moon, the battery was cool to the touch, everything nice, because these batteries are designed for heavy power draw. This one here is 14.4 volts, 10.29 amps, 148 watts an hour. This particular one here, due to its size, is still the same. 14.4 volts, 6.86 amps, and 98.78 watts per hour. The same maximum output of 180 watts, 15 amps. The Sony NPF battery, usually they are 7.4 volts, about 8,000 milliamps, and run about 58 watts per hour. When you put both together, it's going to be about uh, close to 120 watts per hour, uh, close to the same power that this provides, but again, you're going to be uh, torturing these batteries, especially when you run in a light panel. So this is one of the main advantages why I should buy or invest money on the V-mount batteries because they last forever, assuming that you know how to charge a V-mount battery and how to keep it on the shelf, which I'm gonna give you a tip right now. When you store these batteries, you wanna keep this at 50% or 80%. At 100%, it's no good for a lithium-ion battery. And if it goes below 50%, is also not a good thing. So the correct way to store this battery, especially if, when you're not using this for a long time, keep it at a 50 or 80%. This is usually what lithium ion batteries like. And also remember every six months or so to check if the battery voltage has dropped, keep it at 50% or 80%. That's why when you receive a new battery, a V-mount battery or an MPF battery, usually they come at half charge because this is how it is recommended to keep the uh, lithium on for storage for maximum longevity and its health. So I was doing a test here just for the sake of this video because I usually don't like until the battery runs up to the last little bit amount of juice because it's never a good idea. So when this battery runs out of charge for about eight, nine percent, it's gonna be flashing here, but I don't wait until it starts to flash and then die completely because you should never exhaust the battery that way. I'm talking about either this one or that one. Don't do that. As soon as this thing starts flashing on any battery that lets me know it's flashing, either on the LCD, when my uh, DSLRs are on, or my cinema cameras, or whatever battery that I have, I try to remove that immediately unless I can't, there's an intervening progress, and then as soon as the person pauses, I am taking this thing the hell out of my equipment. And then I wait about half an hour and then I begin charging. I have multiple V-mount batteries for that purpose and also the same thing, multiple NPF batteries so they can actually wait a little bit until they can actually be charged. When you do it this way, you can actually have a battery that's gonna last a long time if you don't do it this way, your batteries are not gonna last a long time. But again, the problem that I have when I charge these batteries and then put it on a light panel, even if it is a 40 watt or 60 watts, these batteries are not gonna last as long as if they were only being uh, installed on a camcorder because it's a very gentle power draw. When you put this thing on a light, there's a lot of power. And again, these batteries are not really made for that. So every time I take this thing out of the panel, these things are running really hot. This one here is always cool to the touch. And I'm gonna mention that again, the big advantage of this V-mount battery is because you can have USB power right here, five volts, and also your D-tap to power monitors, anything else that requires power from other than the V-mount batteries. I'm pretty sure when you're filming a wedding ceremony, it's something that you cannot reshoot even if your battery is brand new, the Canon DSLR, I have the 1DX Mark II that's filming me right now. Here, those batteries are massive, but still, they're not as big as this. So every single time when I'm shooting a wedding, especially video, right? I always keep my eye on that battery meter right on the uh, bottom right side of the display. Am I gonna be running out of battery soon or should I change it now or later? With this guy here, so even if your DSLR, your C100, C300, whatever, doesn't have the uh, actual V-mount slot in there, you can actually buy an adapter that you can actually run either from the D-tap or from this straight to the camera. And one thing that you don't need to worry about the whole day, guess what, is power. Because I don't even pay attention to my battery gauge anymore because this powering a camera, you can set it, forget it. So the look of the battery, not that this matters in any way, shape or form. All we wanna see from these batteries is performance, but it doesn't hurt to see something designed on a, a, as aesthetically as possible. So this is the back of the battery and it features here on the side a bunch of grooves. So when you grab this battery, 
chances are you're not, it's not going to slip out of your hand because if you drop these batteries, I really don't want to drop this on the ground. And also features this little gauge here glowing in uh, green LEDs. Right now, this is going to go out immediately after five seconds because you don't have anything connected to these batteries. As soon as you charge, as soon as you connect this, as soon as it senses electricity coming in or going out, this will be permanently on until you actually discontinue use of the battery. And with the two slots here, the USB and the D-Tap, to power any device that requires a USB power, all you're going to do is press this power here once, and then this is going to stay on because there's something drawing power from this battery. Same exact thing with the uh, D-Tap option. So once you press this button, it's going to supply power. So when you dock this thing on an actual device that has a V-mount terminal built in, there's no need to press any button here. The whole thing just uh, turns on itself. So again, the advantages of buying V-mount batteries, because again, these things are not cheap. This is what you can do with this that you cannot do with this. First thing is comparing the mass, for example, this battery with this battery here. Second thing, this is the charger that charges batteries. So you put the battery here and another one. Now these chargers here, they not only provide charge to the batteries when they charge, as you can see here, this also features a DC out. So when you plug in two batteries of this size here, for example, on a regular panel, 60 watt, like the uh, Generate Mini Moon, or any panel similar to that, even the ones that has a V-mount battery, usually one slot, right? You can actually now power the panel twice as long running a cable here from the DC out to the DC in on the light, and it can pretty much set and forget. I have the Luxly Tyco. That thing is a monster. It comes with uh, two V-mount batteries over there. Now imagine a quad charger, four of these batteries, supplying power back to the Tyco, outputting power to this jack over here. You can't do that with this. So if you're just checking this out for the first time, if you don't have any V-mount batteries or even the charger, nothing at all, I would recommend this because it is rather affordable. It's still quite expensive, but is rather affordable if you're looking at V-mount prices. So there are many advantages to have a V-mount batteries. Once you go V-mount, I don't think you're going to go back to the uh, Sony's because it's a whole other level of power. And of course, I could use this as a backup emergency power if I run out of V-mount batteries, which I very much doubt I will. But just in that event, I can actually buy a uh, V-mount adapter that all you got to do is plug in the two batteries and stick this thing into a light that only accepts V-mount batteries. So this is going to dub as a V-mount battery, but I don't keep that higher than 50%, 60% because this will torture this battery if you run even higher because even if the battery is holding up, I would not recommend that because it's not designed for that. I'm shooting a wedding in Las Vegas and I usually do two things. If I take a lot of equipment there, I actually UPS ground everything that I got that I need to use at this wedding and then it arrives there four, five, six days later, which is the whole thing the client pays as a vacation, which is part of the, of the deal. Now, usually the best practice when you're shooting something far away, I tell my client, I can only take this, 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 and that. So as a carry-on, I don't check in anything because it's gonna be destroyed. I don't wanna deal with those Pelican cases and they still manage to do something with the equipment inside. So to make a whole long story short, 148 watts per hour. You can't fly with this. Then Watson sent me the vm 99 hcsr VMOT battery because this particular one here is only 98 watts an hour. Actually, that's a lot of power, but anyway, you can actually fly with this. You can do as a carry-on, you can check it in, whatever you want to do. So I have about 70% the power of this battery offers, but this one you can board on a plane with it, and this one you can. So this one will power everything that I need over there, my camera, my monitors, everything that I want with a single battery. With my wedding in Las Vegas, I made sure I told my client very clearly because he's seen me uh, in other weddings filming uh, other events, and I told him I can't bring all the equipment that I bring when you see me filming New York, New Jersey, Delaware, Pennsylvania. What I'm gonna bring there is just a very essential gear, which is uh, one recorder, uh, one DX Mark II, maybe two or three lenses and a monitor, and that's pretty much it. And uh, a tripod, I can't because it doesn't fit on a carry-on, so I have to shoot with some sort of a monopod that fits on a bag, so. But the one thing that I can't worry about there, even though I'm taking limited amount of equipment, I don't wanna worry about power in there. So I'm taking this with me, 
my wife is taking another one of these with her. Either one of these batteries, they also feature a SM bus communication, which means when you actually dock this in your camera that has a V-mount slot in there, all the battery information is transferred to the actual screen, so it communicates with the camera. The OEM battery that I power my Canon C100 Mark II, it costs just a few dollars shy of this battery. This battery runs about $229 at the time and making of this video. Of course, you can't compare apples to apples. Each battery has their particular purpose and designation for the equipment to be used. I'm just trying to compare at least roughly on the surface price because comparing a $400 uh, Canon battery that, uh, to power your C300 Mark II with this V-mount battery here is actually pretty cheap if you look at it that way and also the amount of power they can provide. So if you power your C300 Mark II with a V-mount battery through the D-Tap, it's going to give you a lot more running time with your camera paying for half of the price, 229, 430 bucks, I'm just saying. So to wrap up the video, V-mounts are here, they're not cheap and everybody buys it, it must be a reason. I had my reasons, you probably have your reasons and if you don't have one of these yet, you're gonna even discover more reasons why you should have a V-mount battery, at least one in your possession. Because this and this, this is a whole lot of difference. Professional enthusiast. Well, I hope this video was helpful to you. And again, thank you very much for your time watching my videos. And all I'm here for is to let you guys decide or help you guys out in what gear to buy and stuff like that. So if you want to comment, feedback, or anything you want to write down in the comments, I make sure I respond to everything that I see there. And once again, thanks for visiting my channel and see you next time.